The Town Mouse and the Country Mouse. A country mouse invited a town mouse, an intimate friend, to pay him a visit and partake of his country fare. As they were on the bare plowlands, eating their wheat stalks and roots pulled up from the hedgerow, the town mouse said to his friend, You live here, the life of the ant, while in my house is the horn of plenty. I'm surrounded by every luxury, and if you will come with me, as I wish you would, you shall have an ample share of my dainties. The country mouse was easily persuaded and returned to town with his friend. On his arrival, the town mouse placed before him bread, barley, beans, dried figs, honey, raisins, and last of all, brought a dainty piece of cheese from a basket. The country mouse, being much delighted at the sight of such good cheer, expressed his satisfaction in warm terms and lamented his own hard fate. Just as they were beginning to eat, someone opened the door. They both ran off squeaking as fast as they could to a hole so narrow that the two could only find room in it by squeezing. They had scarcely begun their repast again when someone else entered to take something out of a cupboard. Whereupon the two mice, more frightened than before, ran away and hid themselves. At last, the country mouse, almost famished, said to his friend, Although you prepared for me so dainty a feast, I must leave you now to enjoy it by yourself. It is surrounded by too many dangers to please me. I prefer my bare plow lands and roots from the hedgerow, where I can live in safety and without fear. The Two Fellows and the Bear Two fellows were traveling together through a wood when a bear rushed out upon them. One of the travelers happened to be in front and he seized hold of the branch of a tree and hid himself amongst the leaves. The other, seeing no help for it, threw himself flat down upon the ground with his face in the dust. The bear, coming up to him, put his muzzle close to his ear and sniffed and sniffed. But at last, with a growl, he shook his head and slouched off, for bears will not touch dead meat. Then the fellow in the tree came down to his comrade and laughed and said, What was it that Master Brune whispered to you? He told me, said the other, Never trust a friend who deserts you in a pinch. The Ass in the Lion's Skin An ass once found a lion's skin, which the hunters had left out in the sun to dry. He put it on and went towards his native village. All fled at his approach, both men and animals, and he was a proud ass that day. In his delight, he lifted up his voice and brayed. But then, everyone knew him, and his owner came up and gave him a sound cudgeling for the fright he had caused. And shortly afterwards, a fox came up to him and said, Ah, I knew you by your voice. Fine clothes may disguise, but silly words will disclose a fool. The Boy Who Cried Wolf there was once a young shepherd boy who tended his sheep at the foot of a mountain near a dark forest. It was rather lonely for him all day, so he thought upon a plan by which he could get a little company and some excitement. He rushed down towards the village calling out, Wolf! Wolf! And the villagers came out to meet him, and some of them stopped with him for a considerable time. This pleased the boy so much that a few days afterwards, he tried the same trick, and again, the villagers came to his help. But shortly after this, a wolf actually did come out from the forest and began to worry the sheep, and the boy of course cried out, Wolf! Wolf! Still louder than before. But this time, the villagers, who had been fooled twice before, thought the boy was again deceiving them and nobody stirred to come to his help. So the wolf made a good meal off the boy's flock. And when the boy complained, 
the wise men of the village said, A liar will not be believed, even when he speaks the truth. The Crow and the Pitcher A crow, half dead with thirst, came upon a pitcher which had once been full of water. But when the crow put its beak into the mouth of the pitcher, he found that only very little water was left in it, and that he could not reach far enough down to get at it. He tried, and he tried, but at last had to give up in despair. Then a thought came to him, and he took a pebble and dropped it into the pitcher. Then he took another pebble and dropped it into the pitcher. Then he took another pebble and dropped that into the pitcher. Then he took another pebble and dropped that into the pitcher. Then he took another pebble and dropped that into the pitcher. Then he took another pebble and dropped that into the pitcher. At last, at last, he saw the water mount up near him. And after casting in a few more pebbles, he was able to quench his thirst and save his life. Little by little does the trick. The Dog and His Reflection A dog, to whom the butcher had thrown a bone, was hurrying home with his prize as fast as he could go. As he crossed a narrow footbridge, he happened to look down and saw himself reflected in the quiet water as if in a mirror. But the greedy dog thought he saw a real dog carrying a bone much bigger than his own. If he had stopped to think, he would have known better. But instead of thinking, he dropped his bone and sprang at the dog in the river, only to find himself swimming for dear life to reach the shore. At last, he managed to scramble out, and as he stood sadly thinking about the good bone he had lost, he realized what a stupid dog he had been. It is very foolish to be greedy. The Ant and the Dove An ant went to the bank of a river to quench its thirst, and being carried away by the rush of the stream, was on the point of drowning. A dove sitting on a tree overhanging the water plucked a leaf and let it fall into the stream close to her. The ant climbed onto it and floated in safety to the bank. Shortly afterwards, a bird catcher came and stood under the tree and laid his lime twigs for the dove which sat in the branches. The ant, perceiving his design, stung him in the foot. In oh, pain, no. the bird catcher threw down the twigs and the noise made the dove take wing. One good turn deserves another. The Fox and the Grapes One hot summer's day, a fox was strolling through an orchard till he came to a bunch of grapes just ripening on a vine, which had been trained over a lofty branch. Just the thing to quench my thirst, he said. Drawing back a few paces, he took a run and a jump and just missed the bunch. Turning round again, with a one, two, three, he jumped up, but with no great success. Again and again he tried after the tempting morsel, but at last had to give up and walked away with his nose in the air, saying, I am sure they are sour. It is easy to despise what you cannot get. The Ass and His Master An ass belonging to an herb seller who gave him too little food and too much work. One day, the ass made a petition to Jupiter to be released from his present service and provided with another master. Jupiter, after warning him that he would repent his request, caused him to be sold to a tile maker. Shortly afterwards, Finding that he had heavier loads to carry and harder work in the brick field, he petitioned for another change of master. Jupiter, telling him that it would be the last time that he would grant his request, ordained that he be sold to a tanner. As the ass found that he had fallen into worse hands and noting his master's occupation said, groaning, 
It would have been better for me to have been either starved by one or to have been overworked by the other of my former masters than to have been bought by my present owner, who will even after I am dead tan my hide and make me useful to him. He that finds discontent in one place is not likely to find happiness in another. The Boys and the Frogs Some boys, playing near a pond, saw a number of frogs in the water and began to pelt them with stones. They killed several of them. When one of the frogs, lifting his head out of the water, cried out, Pray stop, my boys. What is sport to you is death to us. One man's pleasure may be another's pain. The Farmer and His Sons A father, being on the point of death, wished to be sure that his sons would give the same attention to his farm as he himself had given it. He called them to his bedside and said, My sons, there is a great treasure hid in one of my vineyards. The sons, after his death, took their spades and mattocks and carefully dug over every portion of their land. They found no treasure, but the vines repaid their labor by an extraordinary and superabundant crop. The Goose with the Golden Eggs One day, a countryman going to the nest of his goose found there an egg all yellow and glittering. When he took it up, it was heavy as lead, and he was going to throw it away because he thought a trick had been played upon him. But he took it home on second thoughts, and soon found, to his delight, that it was an egg of pure gold. Every morning the same thing occurred, and he soon became rich by selling his eggs. As he grew rich, he grew greedy, and thinking to get at once all the gold the goose could give, he killed it and opened it, only to find nothing. Greed often overreaches itself. The Lion and the Mouse Once when a lion was asleep, a little mouse began running up and down upon him. This soon wakened the lion, who placed his huge paw upon him and opened his big jaws to swallow him. Pardon, O king, cried the little mouse. Forgive me this time. I shall never forget it. Who knows but what I may be able to do you a turn some of these days. The lion was so tickled at the idea of the mouse being able to help him that he lifted up his paw and let him go. Sometime after, the lion was caught in a trap and the hunters who desired to carry him alive to the king tied him to a tree while they went in search of a wagon to carry him on. Just then, the little mouse happened to pass by, and seeing the sad plight in which the lion was, went up to him and soon gnawed away the ropes that bound the king of the beasts. Was I not right? said the little mouse. Little friends may prove great friends. The Lion, the Fox, and the Ass An ass and a fox went into partnership and sailed out to forage for food together. They hadn't gone far before they saw a lion coming their way, at which they were both dreadfully frightened. But the fox thought he saw a way of saving his own skin and went boldly up to the lion and whispered in his ear, I'll manage that you shall get hold of the ass without the trouble of stalking him, if you'll promise to let me go free. The lion agreed to this, and the fox then rejoined his companion and contrived before long to lead him by a hidden pit, which some hunters had dug as a trap for the wild animals, and into which he fell. When the lion saw that the ass was safely caught and couldn't get away, it was to the fox that he first turned his attention, and he soon finished him off, and then at his leisure proceeded to feast upon the ass. Betray a friend, and you'll often find you have ruined yourself. The Miser and His Gold 
Once upon a time, there was a miser who used to hide his gold at the foot of a tree in his garden. But every week, he used to go and dig it up and gloat over his gains. A robber, who had noticed this, went and dug up the gold and decamped with it. When the miser next came to gloat over his treasures, he found nothing but the empty hole. He tore his hair and raised such an outcry that all the neighbors came around him, and he told them how he used to come and visit his gold. Did you ever take any of it out? asked one of them. Nay, he said, I only came to look at it. Then come again and look at the hole, said the neighbor. It'll do you just as much good. Wealth unused might as well not exist. Cinderella Once upon a time, there was a beautiful girl named Cinderella. Cinderella lived with her two wicked stepsisters and her wicked stepmother. They treated her very badly and made her do all the work at home. One day, they were all invited for a grand ball at the king's palace. Cinderella's stepsisters and stepmother made her sew new dresses and get them ready for the ball. But when they left for the ball, they left poor Cinderella at home alone. Cinderella was sad and began to cry. When suddenly, a fairy godmother appeared. Cinderella, I am your fairy godmother, she said. Don't be sad. I will send you to the ball. The fairy godmother waved her magic wand. And Cinderella's old clothes changed into a beautiful party gown. The fairy godmother touched her magic wand to Cinderella's feet, and suddenly she had beautiful glass slippers. Then the fairy godmother found six mice playing near a pumpkin and touched them with her magic wand. And lo! The mice became four shiny black horses and two coachmen, and the pumpkin turned into a golden coach. Cinderella was overjoyed and said, Oh, thank you, fairy godmother. She set off for the ball in the coach. As she left, the fairy godmother said, Cinderella, my magic will only last until midnight. Be sure to reach home before then. When Cinderella entered the palace, the entire ballroom was struck at her beauty. Even her stepsisters and stepmothers didn't recognize her in her pretty clothes. The handsome prince went to her and asked her, Do you want to dance? And Cinderella said, Yes. They danced all night long, and everyone wondered who the beautiful girl was. As the night neared midnight, Cinderella remembered her fairy godmother's words and cried, Oh, I must go! She ran down the stairs, and one of her glass slippers came off. But Cinderella did not turn back for it and hurried to her coach. She reached home just as the clock struck 12. Her coat turned back into a pumpkin, the horses into mice, and her clothes turned back into rags. The prince had fallen in love with Cinderella, but he did not even know her name. However, he had found the glass slipper that had come off Cinderella's foot. He said, I will marry the lady whose foot fits this slipper. The next day, the prince and his servants went to all the houses in the kingdom. All the women tried the slipper. 
including Cinderella's stepsisters, but none could fit the slipper perfectly. Cinderella's stepmother would not let Cinderella try on the slipper. But the prince saw her and said, Let her try on the slipper. The slipper was a perfect fit on Cinderella's foot. And the prince recognized her from the ball. He married Cinderella, and they lived happily ever after. The End Goldilocks and the Three Bears Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Goldilocks. She had golden hair. One day, she went out in the forest to play. She saw a cute cottage and knocked on the door. When nobody answered, she opened the door and went inside. There was no one inside. But on the kitchen table, Goldilocks saw three bowls of porridge. Goldilocks was hungry, so she took a bite from the largest bowl. This porridge is too hot, she said. She took a bite from the middle-sized bowl. This porridge is too cold, she said. Then she tried the smallest bowl. This porridge is just right, she said, and ate up all the porridge. Goldilocks was tired now, and so she sat on the largest chair. This chair is too big, she said. She tried the middle-sized chair. This chair is too big, too, she said. Then she tried the smallest chair. This chair is just right, she said. But the chair broke. Goldilocks was even more tired now. So she went upstairs, and there she saw three beds. She tried the largest bed. This bed is too hard, she said. She tried the middle-sized bed. This bed is too soft, she said. Then she tried the smallest bed. This bed is just right, she said. And she fell asleep. Soon, the three bears came home. Someone's been eating my porridge, said Papa Bear. Someone's been eating my porridge, said Mummy Bear. Someone's been eating my porridge, and they finished it all, cried Baby Bear. Someone's been sitting on my chair, said Papa Bear. Someone's been sitting on my chair, said Mummy Bear. Someone's been sitting on my chair, and they broke it, cried Baby Bear. Someone's been sleeping in my bed said Papa Bear. Someone's been sleeping in my bed, said Mummy Bear. Someone's been sleeping in my bed, and here she is, cried Baby Bear. Goldilocks woke up and saw the three bears. Help, she shouted, and ran out into the forest. She never came back again. The End